So, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, 20. 17 to 20. When you read, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 to 20, it says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. When he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. Hallelujah. We are living, we are serving the living God. Amen. Jesus is saying, I am the living one. He died, he resurrected, but he is the living one. I was dead and now look. Hallelujah. I am alive forever and ever. Hallelujah. And I hold the keys of death and hate. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see that? Oh, glory to God. Right therefore, what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. Hallelujah. Can you see that? He is telling John, write whatever you are seeing right now. What you have seen, what is now and what will take place. What will take place after this? Metatauta. The Greek word that is used is metatauta. The, the things that is to take place. Amen. So if you, if you look at the slide, the, the whole book of Revelation and what he is writing there, if, uh, in, the, in the whole uh, of the book of Revelation, you can concise it in this three uh, paradigm. Okay, You can see that the seven churches and the revelation of the seven churches, out, outline of the seven churches, is basically he is writing about their past and their present and their future to come. Okay, Can you see that? The things that uh, he has seen, chapter 1, and the things which are chapter 2 to 3, that is what is happening in the church and the church age right now. And the things that will take place in the future. Chapter 4 of Revelation to all the way up to 19, 20. All these are about the future to come. Amen. Can you see that? Uh, briefly, why seven churches he is writing? Why he is writing to seven churches? And that has to be answered as well. The seven church is not only just a New Testament pattern. It is also the pattern that was in the Old Testament. Okay. Already God revealed uh, through Zechariah. The prophet Zechariah. So look at Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 and 9. Listen. High priest Joshua. You and your associates seated before you, who are men, symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant, the branch. Can you see that? See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes on one stone and I will engrave any an inscription on it, says the Lord Almighty. And I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. Can you see that? Can you see that? It is actually talking about the symbolic people who will come. Can you see that? Zechariah is already saying to the high priest and, uh, and he says, these people who are mentioned in here are the people to come later. Can you see that? Saying that, what is he saying? For they are a wondrous sign. Everybody say sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant. Who is the servant he is talking about? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The branch, the branch. Can you see, literally, if you make out the, uh, the meaning out of this passage, very clear. What is he saying? Who is Joshua? Joshua in the Old Testament, okay, is the name of Yeshua in the New Testament. Joshua in Hebrew means Yahweh saves. Jesus in the New Testament, okay, what they call Yeshua, alright, Yeshua. In the New Testament Greek, it is a literal translation of actually Joshua. It means God saves or Yahweh saves. Can you see that? So both names actually are the same. That means he is saying there is Joshua. He is going to be the high priest. That means I will make Joshua. Jesus going to be the high priest. He says, I am going to bring my servant the branch. You know what the branch means? The branch in Hebrew is the word netza. Netza is the word that is used to, for the branch. In, in, uh, in Greek, if you translate uh, the same netza, netza, it means Nazarene. Nazarene. Can you see that? Where did Jesus come from? Nazareth. He is called a Nazarene. He is called a Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Can you see that? So that means the branch who is going to come is the Nazarene branch. Hallelujah. It's a branch which which this already talked about is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he says, Listen, high priest Joshua, you and your associates seated before you, for they are the men symbolic of things to come. I'm going to bring my servant, 
Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua is going to come there. Hallelujah. And what does verse 9 says? See, the stone I have set in front of Joshua, there are seven eyes on that one stone. Can you see that seven? In, in fact, in the original uh, Hebrew uh, translation, uh, or even King James Version when you read, or even some of the modern translations like Amplified Version when you read, you will see this is talking about the seven radiants or seven facets of the stone. That means it is literally talking about the stone which has seven uh, radiants. Can you see that? That means Jesus is saying, first time he is using the word stone, that I will build my church on this stone, rock, Peter. Can you see that? Rock, we say, Peter means Petros rock. It also refers to stone. That means he is the stone. And we can see that in that study, in that, in that study, that we will know exactly that the seven is the number that is already given. That is why it is, it is mentioned as seven, the rock. And that seven stones or the seven facet is talking about the seven churches. The radiance will come on this one uh, church because Jesus is the body. Okay, Jesus' body is the church and out of it, the seven churches. It's already laid there, the seven stones or the seven uh, facets of that stone, one stone. In all these seven churches that is mentioned in this book of Revelation, that you read in chapter 2 and chapter 3, there is a very clear-cut understanding. All right? it, it, the churches are mentioned exactly in the same order it has to be. If you put these churches in any other order, we will be confused, or it will not be appropriate. Why? Because, because, each church re represents each centuries. Each church represents each century. And in fact, only four of the churches that is, uh, that is living currently or now is going to, be, uh, going to be in the highlight. But today, I want to tell you, Jesus is addressing to seven churches. Why seven churches? Because that is a sevenfold pattern that he is going to bring into. That is the kind of a pattern or that is the kind of the churches if you put all the churches that is now in, the, in this world and since the church age that began after the Pentecost, you can divide them into different, different uh, uh, scenarios, okay? Uh, different, different kinds. In all these churches, Jesus is doing one thing. What is he saying? He is naming the church. He is revealing who he is. And then he is talking about the commendation the good things that they do okay he's talking about the good things that the church do and then he's giving a condemnation also what they are not doing correctly all right and then thirdly he's also talking about uh, 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 what they should do the counsel is given okay the direction is given and then finally a challenge is declared hallelujah so today we talk about the Ephesian church the Ephesian church. What is the Ephesian church? It's a church. Let me give a small introduction. Okay. That uh, uh, even you can see it in the, in the PowerPoint there. All right. And this church is a, is a major city. Ephesus is a major city in Asia Minor. A seaport. It is a well-known seaport. And location of the uh, temple of uh, great Artemis. You can read it in Acts of the Apostle. 60 miles from the island of Patmos. A very bustling sea, city port. I, 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 as I do this, I was just uh, uh, remembering that this city of Singapore, isn't it? Is a well-known city, a seaport, but we have five and a half million people. Amen. Inhabitants. Those days it were two hundred and fifty thousand, and primarily known for the Temple of Artemis. Artemis is such a such a uh, one of the seven wonders of the world. One of the seven wonders of the world. It is known for the Temple of Diana. It is, this is the temple of Diana. Can you see that beautiful structure? Uh, and also it is known for the theater, the biggest, largest theater, the Ephesus theater. So this is how now it looks like. That was the er earlier picture. Okay, this is the broken uh, Artemis temple. Then the next one, if you see, you see the biggest uh, uh, theater that is there, which is well known, which has the seating capacity of uh, about... Uh, 25 30000 people can sit at the same time this is what you read in the in the book of acts that they were trying to uh, bring peter uh, paul and uh, try to uh, kill him in this crowd imagine imagine that but what about the church what about the, this is a location this is the scenario but the church itself is a perfect church if you read the description let me read it for you quickly revelation 2 verse 1 to 7 
to the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things saying he who holds the seven stars in the right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand i know your works your labor your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary nevertheless i have this against you that you have left your first love remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and to this first work or else i will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from this from its place unless you repent but this you have that you hate the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate and he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit of the lord says to the churches to him who overcomes i will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god hallelujah this church was founded by paul the greatest man of god the one who wrote half more than half of the new testament and it was uh, the apostle paul who uh, not only founded that he was living there for 3 years to teach them 3 years he was there to teach in order to teach them that means imagine so much of uh, uh, doctrines and uh, teaching they would have heard that means they had the highest revelation you know what paul's revelation he says seated along with christ hallelujah a greatest revelation the church had praise the lord praise the lord greatest teaching they had and following him he keeps timothy to be the pastor of the church Paul is now gone Timothy becomes the uh, senior pastor there and he is leading the church imagine he was just like Paul he all that Paul had he down poured downloaded to Timothy and not only that after that he is uh, he this church is uh, you know uh, pastored by John the apostle the third person who does that's why all the epistles of John John uh, 1 John 1, 2 John 3 John and even including the the book of revelation it is written to the church at ephesus such a such a highly uh, what do you call intellectual church highly uh, spiritual church uh, with a perfect doctrines and founded by paul himself the greatest man of god nothing could be uh, going wrong with this church isn't it yet yet if ephesus the word name ephesus itself is called desirous meaning being desirable to be desirable that is what ephesus means living good and doing right and having a great leadership all this was the was, was this church amen it is having a good name abadi thana nige many churches we say wow what a good name we have wonderful pastor great uh, thing what a good, good teaching everything but yet jesus says you lost your first love can that be possible that is the warning that comes to the church my friend that's why we may be a great word church we may be doing great things for the lord and so on and so forth having a great name having a great uh, fame and so on and so forth founded by great people run by great people doing greater things for god but yet god had one thing against the church is they lost their first love but look at the verse one says to the angel of the church of ephesus write these things that means to whom it is written it is written to the angel angel is what angel is the messenger messenger means the pastor the leaders of the church so this is written to the angel these things say he who holds the seven stars seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the of the seven golden lampstand can you see that so he is writing these things to the seven stars seven stars are the seven churches Okay seven stars are the seven uh, 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 churches okay the angels sorry the angels the angel of the church means the pastor or the or the minister of the church i am telling you this is coming to us in fact i was convicted i was convicted because every single letter opens this similar pattern it is writing to the to the the man who is in charge of the church the angel that belongs to the church to them only it is written secondly these things say he who holds the seven stars in his right hand and i want to tell you i want to tell you 
that seven stars he is holding in them in the right hand that means what does it that mean seven stars that means the, in greek it is says kretio 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 means the powerful greek word means having a strong grip having a strong hold and complete control to seize and to retain in the hand holding strongly one thing that we want to do about this church and to know about and learn from this church is basically that god wants to send this message to his children and to the believer body and to the church first of all he says that he is holding the church strongly amen he is holding the church strongly hallelujah that means he will not let it go hallelujah imagine kretio kretio that means he holds he holds strongly the church is been held by him so it is not so easy to get away from his grip the first thing that i want to tell you today concerning this church is if you are the part of the church if you are part of the body of christ you are held strongly by god my friend hallelujah can you see that you are still held strongly by by god think about this imagine uh, this is happening in the time uh, uh, john is writing from patmos and the letter is coming to the churches they are going through persecution the people are ki being killed for their faith they are going to be beheaded and uh, a domination who was ruling there is uh, massacring all the people that's why they were go going through so much of persecution and uh, uh, john is hearing all these things and he is writing as the spirit of the lord leads and he is writing in sending it to the church and you are receiving this uh, news and the letter saying that the lord is holding you in his hand hallelujah what a great uh, uh, comfort will that be amen i want to tell you no matter what kind of lockdown no matter what kind of viruses are surrounding us and a greater tribulation is yet to come amen and the tribulation is go the days are going to be very very uh, very difficult times amen in this time the lord wants to tell he is holding us together in his hand hallelujah strongly i believe strongly the church will not fall away because he is holding hallelujah what he is holding he will hold it to the end hallelujah that's why he says what you have given to me in my hand my father nobody can pluck it away from me hallelujah what a strong statement that jesus says then secondly he says he is walking in the midst of them can you see that he is walking in the midst of them he who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand the the seven golden lampstand represents the church yelu kuthu velakkan madhila namu paatlam paadrom apdi thana seven lampstand what does it mean the seven kuthu velakku are the seven churches amen hallelujah and the lord is walking through it amen hallelujah what does god wants you to know he says in your situation he is walking in the midst of it hallelujah in your situation he is walking in the midst of it he is alive and he is walking in the midst he is walking by your side he is walking with you he is walking before you and he is walking behind you hallelujah that means the midst means it is in every angle that's what the word uh, uh, greek word means peripe peripeton peripeton means it is everywhere it is intersecting it is going before and after a, cir a circum uh, uh, a circum uh, uh, spect uh, view amen hallelujah praise the lord it is the perimeter it is a perimeter view that means everywhere where your god is there hallelujah and to this church god says he is in the midst amen hallelujah god knows it all number 2 number 2 what you are doing what you are going through he knows it all look at the next two words it talks about i know your works i know what you did here there is a seven how many do you know how many fold of uh, things that he is talking about seven folds also seven folds of good work is what he is mentioning there hallelujah i know your works i know your labors i know your patience i uh, i know that you cannot bear evil hallelujah can you see that hey as a child of god we cannot bear the evil you know we have to be against the devil we have to be against the wickedness of the of the devil that's what the word of god says you see you hated you hated what was evil can you see that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say apostles and are not and have found them liars can you see that such a, uh, those are the commandments the seven comma uh, commendations that he is giving seven fold commendations i would say all these things you did not for your sake praise the lord hallelujah everything for god's sake hallelujah not for your name but for god's name hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus and you did not be a nicolaitean another thing he is saying in verse 
nicolaitin you know what is nicolaitin nicolaitin means it is it is uh, the word that is used to oppress people to conquer people to you know kind of brainwash the people and direct them you know some unfortunately some churches are like that they are uh, they are uh, 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 they are being manipulated by the men of god or the women of god i am talking to t- pastors or ministers who will see the church should not be that way you cannot tell them what to do direct them you have to direct them to christ direct them to the word they have to know how to relate with god you you cannot direct them you live here you live there you don't do this you don't do that we are not there to do that praise the lord if it is any times that we have done that let me let us repent on that let us repent on that we are not to conquer people forcing our 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 things over the people that's wrong that's what balaam did anyway praise the lord and he said you hated nicolaitans that's what verse 6 says but this you have in common that you hate the deeds of nicolaitans which i also hate amen god does not hear uh, you know why i said this is a warning for the churches because it is uh, uh, the the shepherds are very important during this time yes. so we are doing the things what we are doing god knows it amen second thing that i want to encourage the first thing is that god is in the midst of you he is holding you amen church god is holding you god is ev- holding every one of us secondly he, he knows everything that you're doing amen he knows everything that you're doing but thirdly and lastly we are going to close with that the first love they missed it you see that but one thing nevertheless i have this one thing against you that you have left your first love your first love do you know that the first love you lost is it possible to do like that doing all things right being a great church being a great fame and a, and a name church and so on and so forth but losing out in this one yes it is possible yes it is possible do you think they uh, they lack the love for god do you think they lack the love for god i think god wants to bring this one message very strongly into the body of believers my friend did they lack love for god no they ran for god they did their doctrines correct they tested the spirit they were given unto the word of god they did everything what they need to do hallelujah they did marvelous things they did marvelous things for the lord that means they did not lack in their love for god then what what john is talking about he lost you lost the first love your first love he didn't say you lost the love for me did you see that i want you to read that word and understand clearly he didn't say you lost the first love for me many people say like that oh you lost the love for god you did not go to church you did not do this I, i'm not talking about that my friend he is even drilling even deeper to that he is not talking about your love for god i know many of you are passionate for god you are leaving away your family also and doing things for god but you know what god is asking you lost your love for who to who we lost the love to the fellow beings in our process of making the church great the wonderful things that we need to do for the lord and the ministry and so on and so forth we lost the love to be compassionate to one another that's why john's epistle completely talks we don't have time but you can write down this scripture 1 john chapter 4 8 1 john chapter 3 11 it all talks about if you love your neighbor you know that god is with you amen nee unnode sagodara nenesithana kartara nesikira kartara unnode kuda irukkar amen if you loved somebody next to you then you are having god in you that's the way that we know that we are the children of god this is what the language that john is using in the epistle and that 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 epistle is called the epistle of love completely bubbling out with the love where is the love for your neighbor where is the love for your spouse you know the same john that same paul is writing look at i mean not john to the same church at ephesus he is writing in ephesus chapter 5 verse 25 what is he writing love your wife isn't it maybe we are loving all the people around us but do not love your life love your wife i th- i think in these last days above all things god wants to make us align with him in the little things my friend in the basic things we don't want to lose out doing all things for god but when he comes we are found a loveless being 
just doing it for the sake of doing it god in fact doesn't need that and this is what god spoke to me very clearly very clearly and he says you know malachi chapter 2:14 can we have that malachi chapter 2:14 malachi chapter 2:14 that word is very clear and concise thank you jesus yet you say for what reason because the lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth can you see that with whom you have dealt treacherously yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant my dear friend to some the lord is speaking and the pretext of doing all the things of a great church the lord has witnessed between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have treacherously dealt with that means you did not treat her well god does not allow that my friend because he looks us as the bride our relationship with god with christ is that of a bride and the bridegroom amen or manavalanu manavatiyum pole or uruvagapadathiradha namu paakrom that means god is interested in the relationships god is interested with the covenant if that is the case remember therefore from where you have fallen verse 5 what is my my response repent and do the first works repent and do the first works or else i will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent can you see that two times he is talking about repentance there itself my dear friend today the lord is calling you the lord is showing you even as we deal deep with the word of god with other aspects you might have heard your lost love your first love for the lord and all this thing actually he is interested your love to the neighbor next to you your love to your family and to your kids and to your spouse more so this is the call this morning god wants to set that thing imagine if we have to lose out because of that we were a great church we were a great person for the lord we were doing great things for the lord i want to tell you have we done this first thing rightly